Is Kill Her Goats the horror goat or just another sacrificial lamb? Let's find out now. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. Today I'm here to talk to you about Kill Her Goats, which is a new classic horror film that came to 4K UHD and Blu-ray. It's kind of a strange release. The 4K UHD, I think, came out like early March, like March 4th or so, and it's still kind of shipping out. And the Blu-ray is coming out, I think, March 16th. It is an indie operation. It is a small operation, so they are kind of shipping things as they get it. So those release dates are a little flexible. But in any event, it is out. You can purchase it at killhergoats.com. And it is an old school horror film. It is definitely a love letter to classic horror. And my hot take is, look, this actually kind of hurts to say, I think you should probably pass on it. It's between a pass and a red. Like, if this is a very appealing movie to you, if this kind of style really speaks to you, you can rent it. You'll probably enjoy it. But I don't know. My opinion is... I am very glad that it exists. It is not really a great movie. So my recommendation is ultimately to pass on it. But like I said, I am happy that it exists. It is definitely a labor of love and uh, kind of an ode to older horror movies. And it was definitely fun to watch. But there are just some aspects that did not feel very well done. And the ending was pretty disappointing. So I'm going to tell you a little more about the film. A few things I liked, a few things I didn't like. And then go into that ending when I'm talking about things I didn't like. So as you can imagine, there will be spoilers in the ending section. If you don't want to know what happens in this film... I would turn it off when I get to the spoilers. Before that, I will keep it vague. I will keep it kind of general. But when I get to the spoiler section, there will definitely be spoilers. So turn it off then if you don't want to know what happens. So, like I said, Kill Her Goats is a, an ode to like old school, older horror movies. Uh, the way I found it was there was just a Facebook ad that said like, hey, all practical effects, Kill Her Goats is up. And I was like, that's strange. I haven't heard of this movie. I went to the page. Sounded good to me. I love practical effects and I love horror. So I figured I'd give it a shot. Now, in Kill Her Goats, you have Audra, who has recently graduated from college. She is gifted a house in Cape Cod by her parents. It's called the Tup House. It's this, like, cute cottage in uh, the Cape. It's, like, right on the water. There's a dock there. It is a picturesque cottage, but I guess it has a history. There have been some strange uh, occurrences, and some people have disappeared. And it's also kind of a family house owned by the Tup. So you think, maybe there's something going on here. Maybe there's something bad that's going to happen. Spoilers! Something bad does happen. Um, in any event, Audra comes to the house after her graduation, after she's purchased the house, and spends the night with some of her friends, and that is a very eventful night. So do Audra and her friends survive? I guess you have to watch to find out. So, things I liked about this movie. The first, and you know what, my favorite part, is the practical effects. This is definitely a practical effects movie, and you can tell. The uh, the gore looks great. The, uh, the death scenes are really well done. I really kind of love... The practical side of it it looks fantastic like you can tell that they spent a lot of time on this and that they really kind of put some effort into the effects in this film and i just love old school horror i love practical effects i think it makes it so much better especially when you got a slasher film because that is kind of the the, the payoff i guess or the the big kind of thing that draws viewers in are those kills and the kills in this film look great the second thing i loved is the old school feel like you can definitely tell that this is a kind of classic feeling horror film for good and bad but there were definitely some things i liked it was playing with the viewer a lot there were a lot of like camera angles where you would be like looking into a window there would be a lot of like scenes where the camera would pan off and look out into a window and you'd expect to see something because that's kind of what you would expect in the old horror film and nothing's there uh there's a lot of scenes like that and the film does a really good job with like the mood music and the atmospheric sounds to make you stay on edge even when nothing is happening. And you can tell that they are definitely trying to build up to some bigger events and they are playing with the viewer during that time. And the last thing I loved is the 4K picture. It looks really good. I got the 4K disc for this film and there are some scenes that are really, really nice. Some of the night scenes really pop. There are some kind of grainy scenes, some things that don't look that great. But overall, I was happy with the 4K quality. I thought that it was a really kind of beautiful film. And especially there's an opening scene that happens at night and the 4K picture just looks really, really nice. So all that being said, things I didn't love as much. The first is there's some poor delivery, some poor writing. I don't know, I guess you could say that maybe that is in line with uh, classic horror, but there are just some kind of lines that feel, they come out of nowhere. They're not super funny. They're not super insightful. And sometimes they're not delivered great. So it makes it so it's tough to kind of believe the characters and really kind of get behind them when the characters don't actually feel that natural. So the second thing I didn't love is there feels like there's a lot of filler in this film. 
Um, there is, you notice at the start, there is a long credit sequence at the start. It's about, I think, three minutes long or so. I didn't time it, but that's just how long it felt. Where it's introducing you to all the characters, but it just feels like it goes on for so long, and it kind of does. And there are some other scenes like that. When they're first exploring the house, it is an exhaustive exploration of the house. Like, every room they go to, and then Audra does something in that room to spend some time there, and she goes down the stairs... And it feels like this film, I don't know, didn't have enough substance overall. And so shot some stuff to kind of fill that void. The film is a, a good length. It's 100 minutes. It's a, it's, it feels like a solid length for a film. But it feels like that until you realize a lot of these scenes are kind of elongated to fill that void. I don't know if that was the plan or, or if that was just something that they did after because they wanted to get like a longer runtime. I'm not sure, but I definitely was like kind of wondering when the scenes would move forward and it felt like they could have tightened up some of that and gotten to the action a little quicker the third thing i didn't love is i got some of there were some like audio glitches some of the audio like some of the dialogue didn't feel like it was coming from the right spot it felt like stuff that was recorded after so it didn't sound kind of in line with the rest of the dialogue that was happening and I don't know what, if this was my setup or something else, but this is the first time I've had this happen where when I would pause and restart uh, the track, the it would like, like there would be like a static sound when it started. It only happened when I paused and then started again. It didn't happen when I was actually playing it, but it was a little jarring at the start. So overall, the picture was great. Audio was, was just okay. The last thing I didn't love is the ending. It, it kind of goes off the rails and feels like it goes on a little bit too long. So in order to tell you more, I am going to... Go into the ending, but uh, if you want to check out Kill Your Goat, and you might, because it is it is an interesting film. Like I said, I'm very happy it exists. I don't think it's a great film, but I am happy that it is there. I You can definitely tell that it was a labor of love and made with like a, a reverence for old school slasher horror. So uh, you can go to killhergoats.com and check it out. There's also a, a discount code that came in my package. It's like GOATS10, so you can use that to get 10% off. And, um, you know, it... I'm happy it exists. Look, it's an indie film. It was a Kickstarter film that is now being released. So look, I, I love that they're doing this. And I'm excited to see what they do next because of their practical effects angle. But uh, I just didn't love this film as much as I was expecting to. But so that is Kill Her Goat. You can check it out on 4K UHD if you can find it or on Blu-ray DVD. So check it out if you're interested. Now I'm going to go into the ending section. So Audrey gets this house as a graduation gift. Her father's apparently loaded, and uh, he also just recently was killed by the Goatface Killer at the very start of the film. The very start of the film opens with him and one of his, like, girlfriends camping, and they get killed by the Goatface Killer. Audra doesn't know this for some reason. She she has no idea that this happened, but now she's in this house. So Audra gets to this house and explores it exhaustively. Like, every room, something happens. She jumps on the beds, she goes and looks at the window and looks at another window and talks about how happy she is, and it, it takes a long time. And then she goes, like, outside and, like, goes down the stairs to the dock. And some of this is, I think, necessity because it's building up the tension. They're trying to, like, get... They're trying to have the viewer expect something will happen, and nothing does. But it's definitely... Definitely was supposed to keep you on edge, I think. But it did feel overly long. Then her friends come, uh, Reese and Missy. And they all spend the night in classic horror genre tropes. Most of them take showers. Most of them are kind of tense scenes where you expect something to happen. They watch a horror movie and go to sleep. But then some odd stuff starts to happen. Uh, Missy has a really bad dream, uh, which is not really related with the uh, mythos in the film. But she has a dream that she's in a cemetery and is like walking around the cemetery a lot for a very long time. Until she eventually gets like dragged into this random pool. By by a goat face thing uh and during this time audra and reese are kind of watching the movie and then reese goes to sleep it's a long sequence you're just kind of waiting for stuff to happen so eventually there is a goat that is in the house and they're like oh that's weird and then the goat face killer comes into the house and they're like that is very bad he is this hulking thing with like a goat mask and muscles and a dual wheel like a, a dual-sided hedge trimmer uh, it is kind of like a chainsaw, but it, it's a hedge trimmer, so it looks fairly impressive. Although it's kind of silly to have the the hedge trimmer, not the chainsaw. I was expected, I would have expected the chainsaw. That would have been a little bit more uh, scary. But in any event, he chases them outside. Audra doesn't have her keys. They don't have phones, so, but so she has to go back and get her keys and check on Missy, who they don't know if she's okay or not. They had to run out to to get help. The goat face killer like 
had gone off. So she's like, okay, I'm going to go up. So she goes up. Missy's dead. She was somehow killed during her dream. They don't really relate the dream uh, to what happened to her. But while this is happening, a, another goat face killer like crashes through the skylight. It's a less buff goat face killer, but it has this weird sword thing. So he attacks Audra. Audra gets away. And during this time, Reese is drawn into the like uh, guest house, some sort of like shed thing in the side. Because that is where her phone is. Her, she hears her phone being called. She goes to check it out. And wouldn't you know it, when she gets in there, the goat face killer's there and he kills her. So now Missy and Reese are dead. Audra's the only one around. She runs away from the uh, smaller goat killer and hides in this like boathouse. And she's, it's actually a pretty good scene because she's like hiding in the boathouse. The other uh, smaller goat killer is getting in there. He's like, slashing things trying to find her and wouldn't you know at the right time she like had rigged up a rope and she pulls it and that causes one of the boats to move which the goat killer like turns to look at that and she throws the canoe that she, that was on her onto the goat killer it staggers him and she like stabs him a bunch and then takes his sword thing and just decapitates him so one of the goat killers is dead and relatively quickly like it was a pretty quick kind of turn overall and she never unmasks him you never really find out who this one is he's just dead so now there's only apparently one other goat faced killer the big one so during this time like after this kill you are introduced to a new person Haley, who is audra's sister uh she is drives she drives me a lamborghini it's kind of a fun scene because he's just like is introduced part way through in this new sequence she comes in she is just coming from her like father's deathbed he died and at that time her husband brett at that moment like asked for a divorce so she is not having a good day uh apparently they didn't sign a prenup uh Haley and audra's dad is loaded and so brett thinks he's gonna be able to get some of that inheritance so he asks for a divorce so she's not having a great day and it's gonna get worse because when she gets there the goat face killer, killer attacks her but she is a badass apparently because he like tries to scare her and she just turns around and like whacks him with a bottle of wine. Doesn't kill him then, which I thought was kind of weird. You know, like the person's on the ground. He's got dual hedge climbers. He's not exactly friendly. Just take him out. But she doesn't. She runs away. So you would think that she would like run and hide. But uh, Haley is, is kind of more prepared for this. She kind of runs and hides. And when the goat face killer gets up and starts pursuing her, she's ready. And she like hits him with an axe and... Hits it with an axe a couple times, right in the stomach. There's a lot of blood. This is a kind of a fun, you know, I guess, role reversal scene. And after she's hit him with the axe a few times, she unmasks him. And wouldn't you know it, it's Brett, her husband, which I don't know how this possibly works because she came right from the hospital in a Lamborghini and she got there late at night. Uh, Brett was at the hospital. I don't know if maybe she stuck around a lot longer. Maybe Brett asked for a divorce and then left. But somehow Brett got to the house much, much earlier than her even though they were both at the hospital. And then Brett was able to suit up and kill people while she was driving. I'm going to say that probably Brett left right after he asked for the divorce. Haley stayed around for uh, a few hours. And that's kind of where that time discrepancy happened. But in any event, she unmasks him. It's Brett. And uh, he says, I killed your dad for the inheritance. And this is when Audra comes and whacks Brett in the back with a an axe. And so now that goat face killer is not doing great. It falls on the ground. Haley and Audra kind of like say hi to each other. And then Audra starts hitting it more um, because she finds out that uh, Brett, the ghost, the goat face killer, killed her dad, which she is just finding out now. And she is understandably upset. So she starts hacking at the goat face killer. But Haley, for some reason, tries to stop her because she wants her ex-husband who was asking for a divorce and killed her dad for money to die in peace. Audra says, you should die in pieces, and she keeps hacking at him, and this causes them to fight. Like, they, like, axe-wheeled fight each other for a bit. Eventually, Audra prevails and, like, like almost kills her, doesn't, and then hits her in the face with an ass, which actually would probably hurt a lot. So, Haley's now knocked out, not gonna have a good morning. Audra seems to be the winner, and you think that that's the end of the movie, but it's not. Now we get introduced... Again, to Audra's ex-boyfriend, Devin, and his new fling, Autumn. And they are, like, going around looking for goats because their prank was they put goats in Audra's house. 
Devin is still mad that him and Audra broke up apparently. So he wanted to prank her and he put goats in their house. And now she's trying, he's trying to gather those goats up. In the process of this, they find the dead small goat face person. And for some reason, Devin takes the goat face mask. I don't know. Maybe that person was Devin's friend that was trying to scare Audra. But that would be a pretty extreme scare. Like he jumped from a skylight down and presumably also murdered someone. Although maybe that was the big goat face killer. You don't know. But actually, you know, he probably wasn't because he was definitely trying to kill Audra. So uh, I don't know why Devin takes the mask, but he does. And him and Autumn keep walking and looking for more goats. But uh, while they're looking for goats, Audra comes up behind Devin. I guess she sees the mask and for some reason thinks he's going to hurt her. And even though he's not doing anything, she just like whacks him in the back with an axe. And then whacks him in the stomach with an axe. And Autumn is like, he was trying to help you. What were you doing? It was just a prank. And, and Audra's like, nope. And like starts trying to kill Autumn. And so Autumn and Audra run to the ocean lake thing where Audra then beats her to death with her fists. So Audra apparently has had enough and has zero Fs left to give. So she goes back to her house, uh, goes into the like guest room shed thing where Reese is was impaled and presumably killed. But no, she's still alive. She's in a lot of pain, but she's still alive. So Audra decides instead of calling the cops or the ambulance to suffocate her, to put her out of her misery, which also felt weird because like Reese is still alive and while she is suffocating, it's not like she just sits there and like is is, is almost gone. No, she like her hands come up. She is fighting to survive. But Audra says it'll be better this way and that she loves her. So now Audra killed Reese. In any event, Audra's death count is higher than both of the Goatface killers. She killed uh one, two, three, four, four people. And each of the goat face killers killed one. So the real serial killer is Audra. So now that everyone is dead, uh, she Audra goes to the front of the house. And there's this for sale sign that when she pulled up, she like threw on the ground being like, nope, not for sale anymore. She puts that for sale sign up and walks out into the sunset. And that is Kill Her Goats. There is, are some fun bloopers during the credits. So definitely stick around for that. Uh, it looks like everyone had a lot of fun. It looks like there were some some fun sequences. And look, overall, I'm happy it's made. I'm happy that this film exists. It definitely is an ode to old school horror and a love letter to practical effects. But uh, as you can tell from my discussion of the movie, I didn't think that the overall story and ending were really that good. So um, I am excited to see what comes next. But uh, for Kill Her Goats, I, I'm going to say it's a pass. If you love this kind of movie then uh, you should rent it because you'll probably have a good time. And, but that is Kill Her Goats. It's available on killhergoats.com. Use the code GOATS10 for 10% off. Uh, if you want to see what you get in the 4K limited edition, I have an unboxing video of that. And uh, thanks so much for watching. If you liked this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. I'll spend a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.